just a video on how I replaced the rear accumulators on a self-leveling 123 estate, uh, which I've recently picked up and I'm working on. You can see here the car's very bouncy, it's got no damping in it, and when you're driving along it's quite a bumpy course. So I've ordered the Febby Bilstein accumulators, and these are located at the back of the car, uh, under the um, adjacent the differential and they're a little bit awkward to get on. I'm not a mechanic, I just did this on my own car. And you can see here the driver's side and the passenger's side. The passenger's side is a little bit more awkward with the exhaust in the way. This is a self-leveling valve which is different to the fully hydropneumatic cars like a 6.9. And so I'm just taking off the 17 millimeter bolt which uh, goes to the strut and this will leak oil once it's released, well, when, not even when it's fully released, so you want to catch this, the stuff starts to go everywhere. You then need to release the 11 millimeter fluid line, uh, and you want to probably use some flare nut spanners here to avoid stripping them, although access is tough. There's actually three 10 millimeter bolts holding on the accumulators, which is the easiest bit of the lot to get off on the driver's side. We can then get the accumulator out, uh, which is a bit more fiddly on the passenger side with the exhaust. Uh, oil does continue to leak, so you probably want to actually use the caps that are in your new one. Put them into this old one when you're pulling it down, and that'll stop a lot of oil leakage, which I only thought of after I'd done the first one. And here we have the new accumulators in place. Um, driver's side, not too bad to get on compared to the passenger side, and this is a right-hand drive vehicle by the way, because the exhaust is a bit of a nuisance, which you'll see. So at this point I've replaced both the accumulators, uh, which has taken me probably about an hour and a half working on car, car stands. It'd be a lot quicker doing this another time around. Getting the accumulators off is actually a little bit more time demanding than putting back back on. And it's actually a little bit easier to disconnect those 11 millimeter fluid lines sometimes with the accumulators released, uh, which I determined afterwards. So you can see here, it almost looks like there's a date of 16, 2016 stamped on these, which would suggest that perhaps I built in um, a couple of years ago before I've ordered them. I don't know how long the lifespan is on the 6.9s. It's often regarded as around seven or eight, seven or eight years. So this is afterwards. I haven't run the car or driven it yet, and I think that'll soften up even more. And I haven't topped up the fluid yet, but you can see there's damping there now. It's not bouncing around like a trampoline. And I've got my special work thongs on. And here's just a comparison. I know I'm bouncing up and down a lot on the left side, but you can see that shadow when I stop bouncing how, how much uh, spring it has in it.